Good morning. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We welcome you to Park Lake this morning and um, are glad on this rainy Sunday to be in a dry place and to be uh, worshiping together. We have a red pad that is on the inside aisle of each pew. And if you are sitting nearby, would you kindly be the one to pick that up and start it down? If there is just one person in the pew behind you or, or in front of you, you might share that. Figure out creative ways to do that. We'd love to um, touch base with you this week and tell you about the ministry and work of Christ in this place. Our uh, music director, Rob Ross, has an announcement for us. So I have good news and bad news. The good news is the choir will not be performing next week. I'm sorry, that's the bad news. The good news is we will have a guest choir with us. Um, the Wake Forest University award-winning male Christian a cappella ensemble, Cairo, uh, um, is very excited to be touring in Orlando, Florida and worshiping with Park Lake Presbyterian this Mother's Day. They were founded in 1992 by a group of Wake Forest students that saw a need for a music-based ministry on campus. The group has recorded over um, a dozen albums over the past 26 years and has shared its music and ministry throughout the United States. Um, Cairo has also toured internationally in France and in a missionary role in Zambia. The group's name, which is pronounced Cairo, um, is formed by the first two letters of the Greek spelling of Christ. Um, while these letters appear on Wake Forest's university seal, they are most important because wherever the group goes, they will literally bear the name of Christ. Cairo is founded upon the tenets of music, ministry, and brotherhood, um, facets which are um, treated as equal in their importance. But above all, Cairo seeks to share the love of God to, with many people as it can in as many ways as possible. So we hope you're here next week because we are in for a wonderful treat. So please join us. Thank you, Ron. We have some um, good announcements that need your attention that are in the bulletin. Um, the newsletter, the worship and work, is coming out today and should be at least by the time you leave at the, the doors. Also, if you're looking for a flat Jesus from last week, those will be, the ushers have those as well. So if you didn't get one and you would like one, they will be there. Um, in addition, in your bulletin insert, there is um, a curious little place right here that says, Zip Ode, Where Do You Live? Um, a Zip Ode is, um, is something that was started by NPR, and it is making an ode to the, uh, your zip code. So down the left hand would be the five numbers, five first numbers of your zip code. And then here's how, this, this has to do with the sermon, so that's why I'm explaining this to you ahead of time. Um, so here's how you would go. So um, I'll read this. Um, it's a Zippo. It was actually a contest because April was National Poetry Month. Um, the challenge is to write an ode to your zip code paying tribute to the least poetic definition of where you live, the zip code. Memorialize your federally appointed numerical decinage. Here are the guidelines for writing a zip ode. Five numbers, five lines. The number of words in each line is determined by the number in your particular zip code. If your zip code has a zero, that line can be left blank. Um, this is not syllables, it's words. So um, maybe as you sit and think about it, you can think about your own zip ode. A little fun as we worship together today. Um, let us begin our worship of God in a time of silence.
called to worship. God has made this day. Let us rejoice and be glad. The God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead raises us to new life daily. Glory, to be, glory be to God, our Creator, to Jesus, our risen Christ, and to the Spirit, our Comforter, and our God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we lift our hearts and our voices in praise and thanksgiving to you this day for the wonder of your love, for the goodness of your power and grace in our midst. We give you thanks for the creation of this day and the chance to gather and be renewed here by your love and forgiveness, by the presence of your spirit. These things we pray in Christ's name, amen. First scripture reading is from the book of Psalms, Psalm 98. <clears throat> but sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nation. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Bring forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's love is steadfast, and God's faithfulness endures from age to age. Our own love stumbles, and our own faithfulness waxes and wanes from day to day. Let us confess our sin and our need for God. Patient and loving God, as much as we want to do right, in our sin we sometimes get it all wrong. We see your commandments as burdens, not gifts. We look at the needy and fail to see Christ's face. We work frantically to earn your favor instead of being still and enjoying your love. We set our hearts on the wrong goals and our feet on the wrong paths. Even our best deeds we do for ourselves more than for you. Forgive us, cleanse us, and renew us. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, hear these our prayers which we offer to you in the silence of our hearts. We lift them up in the name and in the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, the faith of the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Thanks be to God. peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. I invite you to turn down and share Christ's peace with one another. spend a few moments on the steps to do so at this time.
everybody's moving kind of slow this morning. Maybe the rain has you worn out. I'm going to show you a couple of things in a, in a few books that I have first to start off with. And I wondered if you could tell me what the picture is. This is a book. It's called Isaiah. It's a commentary on the prophet Isaiah. But in the front of this book, you might see something. Let's see if I can show you. Can you guys see what that is? See what that is? To us? What, are, what are those? Baby footprints, right? What do they look like? How big would you say that is, Rebecca? Two inches? Three inches max? Maybe. There's that one. And then look in the front of this Bible. How about those? Why in the world would I have footprints in my Bible and in that book? Because somebody walked on the books. That means they would have had to walk in ink first and then step in there? Does anybody know? Remember? Hmm? It's a picture maybe of God painting the path. That's a wonderful idea. But what sort of actually happened is when our son Donald was born, Dr. Heller and I we went to the hospital. I was going to have to preach later on that week. And so I thought, well, you know, while I'm waiting there in the delivery room for him to be born, I'll just do a little sermon preparation. So it just shows you how inexperienced I was at the time. There. But anyway, I didn't get much preparation done. But then after he was born, the nurse said, do you have anything? We can put his footprints in. And so I grabbed that book, and they put some ink on his foot and feet, and, and then we made prints in that right there. Then... Then when John Daniel was born, I was really thinking ahead. I thought, well, I'm not going to do anything, but it would be fun to have his prints in my Bible. So I brought my Bible with me. And now, see that? Those are John Daniel's footprints. That was a smudge, you know. That's kind of like John Daniel, isn't it? To have to make an extra smudge on the page as well. So those four little footprints are about the same size. I think John Daniel's feet look a little fatter. Now I want to show you another picture. Hold on. And I'll let you pass this around. See what that is? Take a look at that. Go ahead and pass it around. It's kind of gross looking, isn't it? <laughs> what do you think about that one? What do you think these are pictures of? John Daniel's feet. Yeah, look at that. Now look at the difference there in those little baby feet and these big Sasquatch feet or whatever you want to call them. I'm not sure. These, I think, are size 12 and a half, and those little baby feet. Now, how did that happen? How did those little feet, he grew, he grew tall. He grew tall and grew some big feet, didn't he? Just like that, you're, you're even welcome to keep that, that while if you want that picture of foot there. Well, you all, some of you may know that, here's some other pictures, that we went to, here, you can take that and pass that along. We went to John Daniel's graduation yesterday from Florida State University. So there he is. Now look how tall everybody has got in that picture. Now what are all the things that happened, do you think, in between the time when John Daniel's feet were like that, little baby feet, and when they became like that, those, those big feet, and when he became tall as, the, as his brothers and sister did. All kinds of things happened. All kinds of things. I'm going to show you that one in a minute. But all kinds of things happened. But one thing that we believe and trust and definitely know happened was that God's love was with him each and every day. Sort of like what Rebecca said with these footprints. God was with him on his path and still is with him all the time from when his feet were just that size to his feet are that size to there he is graduating from college and all the days ahead. And the psalm that we read, Detweiler, said something very important. Because the psalm that I just read was a prayer. And in that prayer, the psalmist gave thanks. He said, the Lord has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness. And I think that's a wonderful prayer all of us could hold on to and remember. Whenever we feel afraid, we can pray it like this. Lord, please remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to me. Or whenever we're celebrating, giving thanks, we can say, thank you, Lord, for remembering your steadfast love and faithfulness. Whenever we're worried about somebody else, we can say, Lord, remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to this person. 
because we know and we believe that God's love is with us each and every day of our lives from the point when we had little baby feet like that to when we had big feet like that and to whatever ever comes next. One last picture I want to show you at the graduation. Some of you may remember, look who showed up at the graduation, Flat Jesus. There he is, <laughs> right in front of the famous fountain and entrance to Florida State University. Dr. Helen held Flat Jesus out of the car and asked the lady to hold him. And she thought it was a picture of John Daniels. She was surprised when it turned out to be Flat Jesus. And we took a picture of him there as well. See, even your good work is going all kinds of places. Let's have a prayer together, all right? Dear God, thank you for the wonder of your steadfast love and faithfulness. Help us to remember it and to count on it and to live for it each and every day. Amen. Turning to the Gospel of John, this is a continuation of the um, words of Jesus that Dan read last week, or included in his sermon. I might have been the one to read them. John 15 begins with uh, Jesus uh, saying, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. Picking up on the words of Jesus, beginning in verse 9. John 15, verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. <coughs> I am giving you these commands, so that you may love one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Our gracious creator, what a gift it is to, to be your children, to know that we are created out of love and created for connection, created for love. Open our ears and our hearts to understanding your word for us in this day so that we might live faithful and fruitful lives. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, April was National Poetry Month, and I've been working on my zip odes, which you have maybe started working on yours as well in your bulletin. I wrote my first zip ode last year. Remember, that's the, your zip code, and then you write lined odes according to however many uh, it says in each line. So I'll tell you mine. I wrote my first one 
last year. I was sitting in my favorite chair at home with five numbers on a piece of paper in front of me. And I was thinking about home, zip code, home, and, and how our home is changing and has changed. And it is a busy home, or it has been busy, and the, the busiest one was the last one to leave, and the loudest one. And it often rang with shouts and people in and out and friends in and out and the clatter of meals being prepared and eaten and doors opening and slamming, comings and goings. And I sat in my chair and I thought about how eerily quiet it was, like an ending or a pause. And I sat there wondering what was next feeling sorry for myself. (laughs) And my zip ode last year had a real emptiness to it. This year, I came back to those numbers, determined to be more positive. Our zip code is 32789. Here's my ode. We were five. Now, two. Grown children scattered to Tampa, Tallahassee, D.C. They say home is where the heart is. Who knew I could live in so many places? Now I'm making myself cry. (laughs) Graduation yesterday and all that. Some say that Jesus tapped into a poetic side of himself when he spoke these parting words to his disciples in John's Gospel. In the past few weeks, we've been reading pre-crucifixion words of Jesus to his closest disciples. They are words to live by, final words, and they have a common theme. The common theme of, these are my commandments of love, of lay down your life, of serve, of bear fruit, of abide. These texts are so rich with teachings and final words that we could come back to them again and again, week after week, never moving out of John 15. Today's text is a continuation of those first parts where Jesus says, I am the vine, the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. And you, you are the branches. You might remember that John wants his audience to understand the divinity of Jesus, of who Jesus is as God's chosen one. And he does this in very subtle pictures, but... but Hebrew people would not find it so confusing, maybe not so subtle. In John's Gospel, he uses these seven I am statements meant to bring to mind important images for Israel. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus says, I am the gate. He says, I am the bread of life. He says, I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. And this last one, I am the vine. Jesus adds something here that is different from any other statement because he adds to that, I am the vine, you are the branches. And that is not so insignificant. A connection between Jesus and those who follow him. Jesus is saying that we are an extension of who Jesus is. To make this connection, John uses the word abide and repeats it not just once, but many times. Pay attention, John's saying. This is an important word, abide. The Greek word that we translate abide also means 
remain or stay or live or dwell. In other words, abide means the place to take up residence, the place to set up camp. You may remember in the first words of John's gospel that John describes Jesus as God who came and camped among us, tented among us in a physical body, a temporary dwelling place. The English word abide, we also get the word abode, as in welcome to my humble abode. Now we're hearing Jesus talk about commandments, and then we hear abide, and it would be easy to confuse this as we need to abide by particular commandments of Jesus, as in obey. But Jesus says not abide by, but he says abide in. Make your home here in me, in my life, in my promises, in my love. Make your home here. So what if, in order to understand what Jesus is saying, we insert, take up residence in the places where we've read abide? You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you, said Jesus. Take up residence in me as I have taken up residence in you. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who make a dwelling in me and I in them bear much fruit. You hear that difference? If we abide in this way, which is more linguistically accurate, see how this passage begins to look less like Jesus asking merely for for obedience from us and more like Jesus asking us to live in the promise that he's already given and into the relationship that he's already established. Jesus is asking from us a state of being, to live our lives guided concretely by Christ's grace, by Christ's presence, by Christ's relationship. I like romantic comedies, rom-coms they're called. And I remember a scene from this movie, Hitch, that is is, uh, Will Smith and Kevin James in it, both very funny guys. Will Smith is playing this matchmaker or this, this coach. In this particular scene, he's giving Kevin James's character tips on how to dance. He's got this... Uh, woman that he's really attracted to and and he's going to be more social and Will Smith wants to to show him how to dance and Kevin James is all over the place with his dance moves arms legs flaying up and down but Smith keeps trying to rein him in Kevin James says something about the pizza roll and the q-tip moves if you've seen it so funny Will Smith finally stops the music. "Uh Uh-uh, he said. Stop that. Don't ever do that again. I'm going to show you how. And he starts the music again. And he starts doing like this. This is where you live, he says. Live right here. And he moves from side to side and he snaps his fingers very (coughs) softly. Maybe he moves his hands like he says, right here. You live right here, okay? This is home. This is where it is. And then he stops and he starts breaking out and doing steps all over the place. He said, none of that. None of that. You don't need no pizza. You got all the food at the party that you need. You live right here. Dan preached from the first part of this chapter last week, reminding us that love is the beginning and the ending of our abiding. He referenced that great prayer of St. Augustine, our hearts are restless until they rest in thee, O God. We live in a restless world with many distractions, many options. We leave our cell phones on the table during meals with others and meetings. And it's not just the kids. The adults are doing this too. I'm guilty of it myself. 
And I get embarrassed and frustrated when somebody calls me on it. We're afraid to miss something, but it's driving us to not being present where we are. Jesus is reminding us to abide in the promise that when we abide in God, we have what we need. I'm not sure we believe that. Jesus is reminding us to abide in that promise. And when we're with one another, we should abide there too. You live here. You live here. This is your home. In my love, abide in this love. Yesterday afternoon, we were sitting in college graduation ceremonies. By the end of the weekend, the college would confer almost 6,000 diplomas. We did not have to sit through that many. (laughs) Dr. Thrasher, the president, introduced the commencement speaker whose name escapes me. And he introduced him this way. He's the CEO of the university's food services. I think Dan and I looked at each other and said, oh, wow, stirring. (laughs) Food services, not exactly a promise for a rousing speech. And it wasn't. (laughs) He didn't have much energy. He was wearing an academic robe that he looked like he didn't feel comfortable in. He was as eager to get on with graduation as everyone else. He said, this is going to be short. Good, we thought. But then he said some things that made us sit up and take notice. And I had to get out my phone and write them down. He said, I started in the company's dish room, and here's some things I learned. Find a support network when you get out there. Find time to be someone else's support network. Give back today, Tomorrow, every day. Be part of work that means something that you're proud of. And if you're not proud of it, don't do it. Don't be afraid of the dish room. At dinner, we said to one another, Well, that was a pretty inspiring speech. Maybe Jesus is giving something of a commencement address here. Jesus acknowledging and anticipating the very difficult world of evil and death and dying that his disciples and we are living in. And appealing to our understanding that life and reality as sheltered by Christ himself is truly life. Just as a branch is connected to the vine. Jesus is leaving and his disciples says, how are we going to make it? How are we going to keep going on? And Jesus says, here, this is your support network. Well, really, he said, this is where you live. By abiding in me as I abide in you, and as you in me, others will abide as well. Abide with me. It's a commandment. It's also a prayer. At this table... Here we are given an invitation to dwell in what is already true and given, to live in the remembrance of the love of Jesus Christ, to meditate on Christ's cleansing word, to heed his call, to love one another, to take up a residence in his freeing and comforting love. And then 
we are given the reinforcing and reassuring promise that in any case, Christ dwells with us already. Abide in me as I abide in you. Jesus acknowledges that this type of abiding needs practice and needs commitment and determination to stay in this zone, to stay in this space. You live here, Jesus says. So abiding in Jesus, I imagine another ode, this one not with numbers, but with the letters J-E-S-U-S. What if my ode of Jesus was my zip code? Jesus, every step I make Sustain me with your love. Underscore that it is out of knowing that you love me that I love best. So guide my going out and my coming in forevermore. Amen. Let's stand and affirm what we believe. We will use the Apostles' Creed which you can find on page 14 of the hymn book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and sitteth on the right hand of our Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Our worship continues as we present to God our tithes and our offerings.
Friends, what represents a home more than a table where a meal is set and shared and all are invited to come, take, and eat, the meal is ready. Here we have the table of our Lord Jesus Christ set in the house of God and the invitation out there to take and eat. Come, believe in his name, share this feast. It is an invitation to us, it is an invitation to the world to come and to abide at this table for a while. That's our, our invitation today. Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, gathered at table with his disciples and, and took a loaf of bread and blessing it, he broke it and he said, friends, this is my body and it's broken for you. When you do this, remember me. He took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant my blood shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink of it, all of you. So as often as we eat this bread, as we drink this cup, we are invited to remember Christ until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Oh God, here at your table we abide for a while and you prepare our hearts and our Mind. Some, sometimes you prepare us for a special thing, and sometimes you're preparing us just to be ready. We thank you for bread that sustains and, and cup that nourishes our thirst. We thank you that you are our Lord and giver of all good things, nourisher of the earth. We thank you that in your Christ, your gift keeps coming. Most fully, your grace is known in the life and the work and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for the remembrance that your spirit tells us that there is work, that there is still to be done, and you intend for us to abide in you and to be a part of that work. As you began this work within us, we pray that you would show us how it is to continue. As we break this bread together and share this cup together, remind us that we abide in this table this day. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Friends, the feast is ready. It is time to eat.
Let us pray. Lord, by your great and wondrous love, you have fed and nurtured us here at this table. You have filled us with the gift of your spirit. Send us forth out into your world to live in obedience to your command that as you have loved us, we love one another. Help us, Lord, to live within the world as messengers of your love, as recipients of your love, as doers of your love. And by your love, may the world be transformed into your good creation as you intended. In Christ's name we pray, amen. going on. You will be going here and there, being led to places you didn't expect. But know and remember that if you abide in Christ, he abides in you, and so you abide in one another. Find that network. And now may the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of Christ's Spirit take you on the way. Amen. Mm -hmm. 